Welcome to World of Marketing Podcast, a Foster Web Marketing production. Here's your host, Tom Foster. Hey everybody, it's Tom Foster, the World of Marketing. And oh my God, this is a big day. I've got a huge celebrity, like one of the biggest of all time. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Mike Capuzzi, who I got to tell you, he's responsible. You are, dude. You are responsible for Foster Web Marketing. Really? Yeah. You are one of <laughs> you are one of the one of the very few. Truly, truly, truly. And he did not know I was going to do this, Dan. Um, but and and I tell people all the time, it is because of the mastermind, the Capuzzi Glass mastermind. And I just talked to Ben yesterday about it. And we were just talking about how important mastermind groups are and how the mastermind group that, that Ben dragged me to basically, he's like, you got to come do this thing. I was like, what? I don't, all right. You know, I thought I knew marketing. I thought I knew what I was doing and met you and you brought Dave Fries. That's when I met Dave Fries and then Paul Partridge and, uh, uh, Palmer, Jim Palmer. Palmer. Yeah, Jim Palmer yeah. and uh, other characters along the way. Rem was in it, Bob Battle. Um, Ed Rush came to a meeting. Who? Ed Rush. The fighter yeah, yeah, Ed Rush. Yeah, exactly. You guys were the Padres. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I mean, how, that was like 20 years ago. Uh, it feels that way. It was 2006, 2007. And we, yeah, that's when I was just kind of getting started. And DSS was just getting born. And remember, I think one of the first conversations where, cause I was like the little kid of the group. I was a little kid of the group and you guys used to like beat up on me. And I'd be like, I'm thinking about getting a, uh, uh, an accountant. And you guys are, what does it matter with you? And that's also when you were just starting with copy doodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, what, it, yeah. right? Yeah, it was actually before Copy Doodles was at least before Copy Doodles was brought to the world, and it was Ben Glass that encouraged me years ago to do that. So yeah, it's a weird Tom how things just have a way of evolving, working out. I mean, here we are, what, fourteen years later? I mean, oh my gosh, looking the same, looking the same, right? Yeah, of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no more. We had the same amount of gray back then. That's right. Well, and. Thank you so much for, for joining me. I know we were gonna, you were gonna come down yeah. and we were gonna do this, but you know, we got this pandemic going on and we have to do social distancing, but we're still cruising and marketing never stops. And that's part of the message here, right? Marketing never stops. You are a marketing guru, genius, yeah. truly. You've been a marketing consultant to some of the top marketing. I know you've worked with Dan Kennedy, right? With Dan, yep. Not yes. for Dan, but yep. No, with Dan. That's <laughs> what I'm Dan. I was, I've been right. advising Dan for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and you've worked with a lot of others. Like, uh, we just joined, your name came up because I think you spoke to uh, Brian Kurtz's group, right? The Titans Mastermind. Yep. We just well, joined. Actually, it. I, I was, I did, yeah, it was, uh, unfortunately, that's one of the um, casualties of this whole pandemic. I was supposed to be speaking there in uh, next month. That's right. Uh, that's, and now that's he's, right. I guess he's going virtual with it and we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, yeah, Brian's a smart guy. Yeah, well, we're excited to be in, in that because I needed another mastermind. So you need to start another mastermind group. I'll be in it 100%. Very good. So, okay. Thank you again for kicking me years ago. Uh, I don't know if I would have been where I am without you and without your mentorship and without the introduction of those wonderful people that have become my friend. I mean, Dave Fries is one of my best friends of, of all the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, Ben and I are, are tight as can be. Um, so, but you have changed and done multiple things over the years. Like when I knew you, it was all about copy doodles. So why don't you just tell people real quick what copy doodles is how it started. I'm sure people are interested in that. So why don't you give us a little? Yeah, sure. And, and it's actually still relevant. I mean, we still sell copy doodles. Uh, so we're now in our 
I brought it to the world in 2007, so 13 years ago. Um, but the backstory, Tom, is, you know, if you couldn't tell, I'm a Penn State graduate, uh, an engineering graduate. Um, so I have an engineering degree from Penn State and actually did engineering for a number of years out of college. Then I joined a software company in a very technical role. But it was a small software company that got very large. So I started, I was employee number 57. When I left, there was thousands of employees. Uh, this is right before the, the, the dot-com era. And um, uh, they were strictly a technical house, but moved to then assuming the marketing and sales of their software. And they started a marketing department in the company. They asked for people who might be interested in this. And long story short, I went from technical to marketing back in... 92, 93, something like that. And uh, anyway, um, I share that only because I had this technical geeky background for those mm -hmm. folks that know me, I uh, know that's true. Um, and uh, you know, when I really started studying marketing and then eventually direct response marketing, which is a, you know, a different form of marketing, uh, and then finding people like Dan Kennedy and some of the classics like, uh, you know, David Ogilvy and, and John Caples and all that, I really started studying the science of response, the science of how do you get people to, uh, you know, notice your message, uh, and more importantly, not only notice it, but take action, right? So one of the things that I uncovered, and Tom, if you were to study marketing for the last 100 years, you would see examples of this, is that handwriting is an attention grabber. Now, back in the day, that's all everything did. When I was in my freshman year of college, my freshman year I was at Texas A&M, and I had a girlfriend back in Pennsylvania, where I'm from, and I was in Texas. This is back in the mid '80s. Phone calls were five dollars a minute. I wasn't fly. I flew home twice at uh, Christmas time, and then when I left in the spring. Uh, but I was literally handwriting her letters because the phone call was like you know too expensive. So back not that long ago, handwriting was very common. Now with computers, um, obviously, you know, uh, handwriting is becoming a lost art. Um, therefore, That's, it's sad too. Yeah, That's a is, sad thing. And, you know, we all know a lot of kids don't even know how to do cursive and all right. that. But what's interesting though, Tom, is that gives us an opportunity in that when we want to get attention, create a pattern, interrupt, use handwriting. And you see smart marketers, you know, back in the 20th century now will use, you know, handwriting or even what I call doodles, copy doodles, little elements, little drawings, just to draw attention. So anyway, long story short, or almost a long story short, um, I started doing these little doodles for my clients. I, I started my marketing company in 1998. I was working with clients, and I started you know, this, these doodles, and I would add them to my clients' marketing campaigns and such, um, only using for myself. And again, I was in a mastermind group, Ben Glass was there, and I showed him a letter and long story short, he's like, Mike, you gotta be selling these things. Yeah. Like, really? I showed him to Dan Kennedy, I showed him to Bill Glazer, and the rest is history. And you know, whatever it is, 13, 14 years later, tens of thousands of members. We went from a CD ROM based right. library um, to now it's an on site repository. It's the world's largest database of hand drawn uh, marketing doodles. Um, for print and uh, digital marketing. So. And so this is for like long or any kind of letter, like if something that you're sending a direct mail letter or a web page and that is written or, 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 or typed mm -hmm. in whatever typeface that you can overlay these hand drawings. Doodles, yep. Yeah, doodles, arrows, circles, smiley faces, whatever. And you got, you did this. It's yeah. just, it's, it, it's fascinating to me how you took something that's so like, duh, yeah. right? And yeah. created a, an amazing business from it. And, and I remember you struggling about it. Like, really? Why would I, really? You know and Tom, I still struggle. Had, had, I got, had I gotten out of my own way, I would be on the island right now because I know what we did with, with, by being in the way. Um, I just never... It was always sort of a pet project. Um, yes. And we've literally thousands, I mean, I've got testimonials from the world's best copywriters and marketers and people just love it. I had one guy, the best testimonial we ever got, Tom, was a, a dentist from Canada. And he, he sent me, it stopped me in my tracks. He said, copy doodles are better than sex. Um, <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was the headline of what he sent me. <laughs> that's I, I don't a good think, testimonial. I don't think that's true, but, uh, 
you know, what's cool is we've we had so many, it, it, it grew organically and we had so many people using them. I had folks using them on TV, I mean, literally like broadcast TV commercials in their books, um, on the sides of buses, you know, like a tour bus thing. Uh, I was literally, this is the God's honest truth, I was in our local hospital, this is years ago. I was a soft, I was a coach for a little league, a uh, softball coach for a little league, and I had to go get, you know, a test um, so I could, you know, be on the field and all that. And uh, I'm in this local hospital and there's a big poster on the wall and there's cop, our copy doodles were on that poster. And I found out afterwards that the ad agency who did the, the, the poster was a, a member of ours. And uh, so it That's was so cool. It's, it's, we've seen that happen over and over again. Yeah. It's, it's very good for you. Yeah. And my, my wife's handwriting was the very original. So that that's what I was about to say. Cause I remember that, that your wife did, actually did the doodles, yeah, the original ones. And uh, my gosh, Tom, if we had some sort of royalty built into that, right. <laughs> I would be on my own Island doing this, this <laughs> webinar. So, but, but thank you for asking. Poppy doodles is alive and well. That's great. Well, one day, when, and we've talked about this in the past, I do want to figure out a way to connect, to get that into DSS to create the API connection. So yeah, there's, we there's should have another conversation about that. There's probably something there. Yeah. So anybody that wants to get copy doodles, what, how do they do it? Copydoodles.com? And they sign up. Uh, and it's a membership thing. It's, you go on, you can search, you download. And then there's all kinds of little um, add-ons where we, not add-ons, but uh, features where you can create your own. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool, nifty little site. Yeah, spice up your content. It spice works. Content. It works. The best copywriters use it. So that says a lot. So you've done that. Now you're doing this Main Street author. Now what, what is it, book publishing? Tell me a little bit about this. So again, since 98, uh, I've made my, put food on my table for my family by helping other you know, clients improve their marketing. Um, mm -hmm used to work with very big companies and then uh, migrated more to what I call now Main Street business owners or people that serve Main Street business owners like yourself, right? You're, you're not a Main Street business owner per se, but you serve Main Street business owners. Um, so, you know, over the years of consulting, and I've run many mastermind groups and all that good stuff, lots of workshops. But one thing that I've done, I started with myself in 2007 with my first book that I published but I've, I've helped clients, quietly helped clients publish their own books. And again, just like I did with copy doodles, I just can't, you know, look, do something. You know, I always got to figure out a better way to do something. And, um, you know, I started realizing I'm, I'm getting these books. I'm buying books on Amazon. I'm getting books as gifts, business books primarily. And uh, I'm starting them, but I'm stopping them. You know, I'm not finishing because they're 300, 400 pages. They go on and on and on and like, oh, man, I just want to get to the meat of it. Uh, right. So, you know, I call them books with bloat, B-L-O-A-T, you know, books with bloat. And I'm like, God, there's got to be a better way. Um, so I came up, much like copy doodles, I came up with my own brand of book. It's called a Shook. The Shook. Shook. I love it. S-H-O-O-K. And that stands for short, helpful book. And, and Shooks are meant to be read in an hour. But more importantly, Tom, they are direct response books. So there are books that are, that should be three, 400 pages. There are books that should be on the New York times bestseller and all that kind of good stuff. That's not what a shook is. A shook is a short, helpful book that a main street business owner or someone like yourself can use so that it gives a very specific promise with a very specific call to action next step. And it can be read in about an hour. So it's, it's like, I call it a win-win, right? It's a win for you, the author, because you can get it done quickly, but it's also a win for your reader because they can read about a topic that interests them in about an hour. So it's not a little brochure, it's not a pamphlet. It is a book, it looks like a book, um, but it gives them the ability to get more information and then take the next step with you. So that is what a shook is, a short, helpful book. So, um, this reminds me of something that I did way back in the mastermind group days with Paul Partridge, who helped me, if you remember, create the five biggest mistakes all attorneys make that cost them, or the five biggest mistakes 99% of all attorneys uh, make that cost them billings and clients. Mm -hmm. That was written 
in 2009 and is still my number one offer still to this day. And that is exactly what this is. We're actually rewriting it. Um, but I'd like to talk to you about that when it's done, about making it, because that is a shook. But I'd like to add the special sauce that you've got, like what other things are in there. Because Isn't that kind of what we're talking about? It's about, it's about really 12 or 15 pages in big, giant font. <laughs> But it's five biggest mistakes. And um, it, actually, it's a little bit more than that these days. But that's the kind of thing that we're talking about, right? This is an offer for somebody like for our, because, you know, most of my guys uh, are lawyers and doctors. And uh, people might not be ready to hire a lawyer right away. Um, and they want, and you, you know, Ben is a pro at this stuff and has so many offers and so many books. But maybe they want to get this, a shook uh, something like this in the meantime, while they're making a decision, right? Right. Correct. It's a very, very elegant and nice business card. Right? I, I call it a business card on steroids. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and you made a good point, Tom. I mean, your 2009 story, I mean, what that says to me is you have a business asset, right? And a lot of business owners, especially, you know, smaller business owners, main street type business owners, they don't think in terms of assets. They think, you know, what I kill today, I eat today. Whereas a long-term thinker like yourself, you've created something, here you are using it 11 years later, probably you know, it's had some variations, but when you have an asset like that in your business, it makes your business more valuable, it makes your marketing more valuable, you know, it does a lot of things. So, you know, you mentioned Main Street Author, which is one of my latest shooks, and I just, since we're having a camera, I might as well show oh, yeah. it. You can see yeah. one of my others in the back, but this is a real book, all right? So it's 120. 40, this one's 140 pages, so it's, it looks like a book. It doesn't look like a brochure, um, you know, which is part of this. I want this, you know, it has a spine text, so it's sitting on the bookshelf. So part of it is, it needs to look like a book, in my opinion, Tom. Now, there are smaller, thinner books and all that. We, we try to get to a certain page count so that, A, it looks and feels like a book, right? Now, what's inside this is a direct marketing uh, architecture. It's design. Again, going back to my engineering days, I'm sure it wouldn't come any shock to you, Tom, that when we started really formulating this and, 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 and perfecting it, if you will, um, I did split tests. I sent out examples to my list of different font styles, different layouts, uh, different sizes. And I did a survey to find out what, I, you know, what my you know, my followers found to be the most readable because if your marketing is not physically readable, um, it makes it very hard. So if you're targeting an older uh, market uh, and you have like you know, four point font, they're not going to be able to read it even with yeah. glasses. Right. So we really, Tom, evolved and created a perfect formula, everything from the design to the architecture, what goes first, what goes second, what goes here, what goes there. And it is a recipe, and it's a recipe for a direct response book that positions you, the author. It makes you look great because you have a, a business card on steroids. Uh, it's a great leave behind. It's a great lead gen device. But more importantly, it invites the reader to start a conversation with you. And that's what they are, conversation starters. So I've got some questions for you. Mm -hmm. What are the top three reasons why somebody should do this? Why a, a business owner should do it? Well, I mean, I think in a lot of cases, Tom, most of your competition, whoever you are, probably does, is, doesn't have a book, right? So yep. if you are, uh, you know, a retailer. So one of my longest term clients, longtime clients is uh, Jeff Giannakovo, who's a, a mattress retailer up in Pennsylvania here. He's probably the only mattress, local mattress retailer I know that now it has multiple books that he has authored. He just released a new one called Sleep Better. And it's a shook, about 120 pages uh, on tips to sleep better. Now, think about this. You, you need to buy a mattress. You go to the big, you know, the store where, uh, you know, everybody, you know, they see it on TV. And it's, you know, one of these you know, big stores. Uh, and, you know, the typical salesperson's, uh, you know, hounding you. Or do you go to a local sleep 
a better specialist like Jeff, who literally has a book that he's crafted, you know, who, who do you feel more comfortable with buying a mattress? So I think the first reason you want to consider doing a, a book or a shook is your competition isn't doing it. And it gives right. you a huge opportunity. Um, second, I'd say, you know, we all respect book authors typically. Uh, most of us have a higher level of respect uh, if somebody is an author. And I'm t again, printed books. I mean, you can tell somebody you're an author of a Kindle book and they'll be like, okay. But you hand someone your book, um, maybe sign it for them, diff something different happens. Uh, so, you know, definitely that higher level of respect. And then the other thing, Tom, and this is where guys like you come into play that do all that fancy dancy back end stuff, on, especially on the web. Um, being an author and having a book allows you to, to market and sell at a more sophisticated level. So you can have sophisticated follow-up campaigns. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Once someone raises their hand and asks for your, your shook, now you, know, you can do a lot of magical stuff on the back end uh, to get them not only to read, but to take the next step, et cetera, et cetera. So that sophisticated marketing it enables you to do is another reason. So I want to tell you a story that you might not know about that exact thing happening where all those things work in, in conjunction with Ben Glass. So Ben, uh, as everybody probably knows, uh, Ben is a, 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 a personal injury lawyer, medical malpractice lawyer, but this, this is a, a, a case that came to him a few years ago, and it was a botched gallbladder surgery. And it was a couple, um, older couple, and the, the woman was the one that had the surgery done, and it was their friend was the doctor. And so she was injured as a result of something that happened when uh, he was removing her gallbladder. It wasn't his fault. Um, it was like somebody else that was involved that they nicked her or something happened. Anyway, it was obviously tragic, but, um, and she got very sick, but didn't want to sue their friend. Uh, meanwhile, the husband, it's always the spouse, is watching this happen. And uh, he's going out and doing research about what if, what if. He's not ready to hire a lawyer yet, but he went out and he, he did not go medical malpractice lawyer, because nobody does that. But what he did was um, botched gallbladder surgery and found Ben's website where he had another story of where this happened. And on that page was a shook, which was, you might not need to hire a medical malpractice lawyer, I think is the title, hmm. something like that. So the guy got that and that's when all the magic happened. He got the book. And the book is very good. Um, but also the campaign that kicked off for six months, that guy was getting emails. And after six months, he called and hired Ben on the spot and said, I'm hiring you. And Ben's like, why did you choose me? Well, I've got your book six months ago. And I've looked and talked to other lawyers this entire time. Nobody answered the questions for me that you have had and that ongoing uh, email campaign. They ended up going to trial and uh, winning uh, almost uh, 1.8 million, which was, uh, is unprecedented for medical malpractice. I think the cap in Virginia is 2.5. So that's a big, big deal, all because of the book or the shook in your case. Yeah. But that's an example of that working in the lawyer world. A lot of times I hear from lawyers, well, that won't work for me. But that's a perfect example of how it does. And that is just one of the many that uh, I've seen over the years with uh, different clients doing different stuff. Yeah. And, and again, you bring up another great point in that, you know, nobody typically wakes up every, you know, in the morning and says, you know what, I need to find a lawyer today. Right. right. Obviously, it's something that it's happening in, in his or her life where that happens. And often it's not an immediate thing. So having that slow bake, that, that process, the kind of stuff that you build and your company builds, Tom, is critical because, again, a lot of business owners think so short-sighted. Oh, 
you know, they didn't call me today, therefore they're never gonna be a client or a customer. Well, that's not the way the real world, world works. We don't like it to be, trust me, I would love it to be, but you, know, you need to have strategies in place, assets in place that, I call it uh, helping before selling, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, once right. Wrote, I once wrote an article, um, and this is a marketing, we, we, so we're allowed to go off on these little yeah, stories, whatever right? You want. Yeah. Um, this is the world of marketing, Michael. Yeah. So you can do whatever you want here. So <laughs> my maternal grandmother, my mom's mom, I, I called her Nana. And she was, oh, I loved her to death. Both my grand, I loved all my grandparents, but my, my mom's mom just loved me dearly. I was the first grandkid. And uh, I came up with this concept called the Nana strategy in, in, in honor of her. I actually put her in a book of mine, one of my shooks. I put a picture of her and I in it because it inspired me. And I always said, the Nana strategy is how we should want to treat our clients and customers, prospects, like a beloved grandmother. Yes. Was my grandmother was out shopping somewhere for a mattress, a car, a lawyer, a web designer. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I would want her treated with respect. I would want her treated by, with helpful information. You had to, you know, and that, mentality that helping before selling mentality i think is a key differentiator i think it should be a goal of all of ours i mean tom you're investing all this time and energy in a podcast right you're not making money from the podcast you are looking to give back you're looking to help others with good quality content that's a help before selling strategy maybe someone watches this hears this and says you know tom's my guy um that's a different type of strategy Books, shooks are one of the key components to that kind of strategy. One of the things that I want to touch on real quick, because I've got more questions for you, is a lot of um, offers, books, are created just as PDF downloads. And a lot of like, okay, we'll just create a PDF downloads. It's cheap. You know, we don't have, uh, I don't have the money to, to print out all these books. What is your opinion about that? I, I know what it is, but I just want to hear what you have to say about that. Well, listen, there's a time and place for everything, right? There is a time and place for a PDF book. There's a time and place for a hardcover book, which we don't even do. I mean, I haven't even done a hardcover. Um, you know, these days, digital printing has really transformed the book printing industry. So whereas back in 2007, my first paperback book, I had to order 3000 copies in order to get the price way down. Right. Nowadays with Amazon or even book printers, uh, you can print a hundred books at four bucks a pop and then, you know, use those up and then, you know, get your next hundred. So, um, you know, there's, there's a time and place for a PDF. There's a time and place for a hardcover. I like paperback. Uh, they're, they're cost effective. I mean, you know, again, it goes back to what we're trying to do. So if it's an email online strategy, you know, download, I like it for my clients, what I suggest is download a, uh, a sampler of the book mm -hmm. and then offer to mail them a copy. So then you can capture their mailing information, yes. but don't give them the whole thing. I mean, listen, Tom, I don't know when the last time you downloaded a 120 page PDF and read that hundred page, you know, the exactly. mail. Exactly. I may have, uh, chances are I print it off and then I may read it because I'm a little more old school. Um, but, you know, there is something to be said about holding a book, um, you know, bookmarks, you know, markers, you know, marking it up. I just think, you know, the goal should be a printed book. Um, however, we have Kindle books, we have audio books. Uh, you know, a little tidbit for your, your listeners, uh, and it shouldn't surprise anybody because we're doing multimedia right now, but, you know, audio books are becoming bigger and bigger. Yeah. I, I just worked with a software CEO client, Tom, um, who bought Main Street Author. He might have bought the book before that, The Magic Short Books. And he said, Mike, when he became a client, when he became a client, he said to me, your book, your printed book was the first book I've, printed book I've read in years because all I do is audio books. And that triggered a thought in our next book, which was Main Street Author, we created an audio version. So we've got Kindle, audio, and print. Did um, you read it? Did you read it yourself? No, I did or not. I'll tell uh. you. A couple, and I've done, I did an audio book for myself years ago. 
A, it's painful, especially for a tech geek like me, because if it ain't perfect, I'm like, we do it. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my Achilles heel. Uh, second, I'm from Philly, and as I've gotten older, I, I used to think Philly people never had accents. Well, we had accents. So who wants to hear, who wants to hear a Philly know, guy drone on? For, so but it's no, good. It's, we have, we have, I, had, I hired a professional. Uh, but I do think there's something to be said. If you have the inclination, matter of fact, the client that I just spoke of, He's doing his own audio book. Yeah. Um, and I, I would encourage people. I think there's something special. I'll do it. I'll do my own. I'll do yeah, it. You, you well, I'm going to hire cool. you. I'm, when this five biggest mistakes is done, the draft is getting delivered to me April 6th. I'm going to work with you to have it put through your process. Okay. Oh, for sure. We're I would love to do, work with you on that. Okay. So that the, the bottom line of that is PDF have PDFs have a purpose but just like you said, if, it, if it's like a white paper, if it's like a teaser, okay. But that should always be just a, a, a uh, segue into getting a printed version of the book. As you said at the top of the call, it's like a business card on steroids. We don't throw them away. Yeah. And we, they also get, ta you know, um, like when you're showing me that, like, I was like, will you please send that to me? That's what, I couldn't wait to ask for that. Will you please send me a copy? Will you send me a bunch of copies that I can send to other people? Because I, I love to include those things in my, what we call, you know, shock and awe. We send out the shock and awe packages. That's another thing that you want to do with your books and your, and, and your shooks is include those lawyer, other, your competitors are not doing it. They're not doing that stuff, and that will set you apart. People will remember you. People buy from people they like, number one. That's the number one marketing rule. And by like, giving them this free information, they're like, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Can, so, can, I, well, yeah. can, I, can I interrupt you? Do you mind if I – can I – Do whatever uh, you want. I, listen, you told me this was going to be down dirty today. We're yeah, in the current situation. You know, I, yeah. typically if I had come down to your studio, I would have been dressed. Now I do have pants on, so I can get yes. up. <laughs> well, I'm good. You're but okay, I wanna, good. Can I show you? Darn something? it! Can I? Can I? Can I, <laughs> yeah. can I get five seconds? Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I got two things. Huh? See, this is good stuff, guys. This is guys brilliant. I'm coming back. Here he comes. All right. Only because you brought it up. So let me, <laughs> let me show you two things. And this is very cool. I'm glad you're doing it this way. So one thing I want to show you, just going back to the PDF thing. So this is an elder law attorney who now she has four shooks. So this, yeah, the first two are on Alzheimer's disease. The third is on dementia. Um, anywho, uh, the very first and last page of a shook, so part of that recipe is what I call the passive call to action. So the primary call to action is, call her office to schedule a consultation. Not everyone's ready to do that, right? Much to your story earlier. So we offer a download, in this case, a PDF download. Uh -huh. So it's a tip sheet. So there, I think a PDF is obviously very opportune, right? It's, it's a short tip sheet. You can see it here, I don't know if you can see it uh -huh. here. We call it an action plan. You know, we give them a link. Where is it? Yeah. All right, so that's cool. Yeah. That's in the first and last page. So that's where I think a PDF is appropriate. You mentioned shock and awe packages. This is my shock and awe package. So this is a, a, uh, a custom box, bite-sized books. That's the name of our publishing imprint. And there's nothing in it right now. It's empty. But our shooks, there's my, you know, our shooks fit in there. So we have a really neat little package we put together, fit perfect. We drop this in a padded envelope where we can mail it directly. You can little copy doodle there. Um, and this is... <laughs> Do you, do you do all that? Do you yeah, make all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, we do. And this oh, is, that's this awesome. Is my, this is my shock and all package. Okay. It's cost effective. You know, it, it, this is not a $25 package, um, but uh, yeah, it's got my name on it, blah, blah, blah. It's fantastic. Anyway, there's, and, this is the kind of cool stuff that you can do um, with this stuff. And, and so kind of like what we were talking about earlier where you know, handwriting is like alien to my, a lot of people, direct mail like direct mail that used to be like the big, the best thing that you could do. Then the internet came and it kind of like, everybody's about web. Now you should be doing direct mail more than ever because people, and especially now can't wait, can't wait to run out to the mailbox to get the mail. Right. right. <laughs> so, I mean like, and the, and the sexier that you can make it like, that's a sexy box. That's sweet. 
I mean, like, and I love how it just fits in there perfectly. And of course you got your the signature coffee doodle stuff. So I can't wait to work with you on, on my offers. I've I'll, actually I'll got send you one this week. Yeah, do that. Um, okay, so you told us a little bit, but tell us a little bit more about your special sauce. Well, again, so another key strategy for any business owner, regardless of what they do, is to come up with your own proprietary way of doing it. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm positive you have that in your business, Tom. Uh, we just started working with uh, an, a gentleman. He's a fighter pilot. He's currently in the Air Force. He's a fighter pilot. He's an instructor. And he's already planning, he's already got a side business for real estate investing. And he made the, the decision right, it's, you know, I love working with these people, Tom. One phone call made the decision, right, to, to, to say, I'm taking this opportunity, I'm gonna write my book. Um, so our very first call with him was he has a process, he has a very unique process for real estate investing. And I said to him, I said, you know, what do you call it? I don't call it anything. Um, but no, we have to. So you've gotta, regardless of what you do, whether it's, uh, you know, legal marketing, or you're a lawyer, you're a book publisher, having your own brand of way and way of doing things and giving that a name and giving that distinction is smart, right? Copy doodles, a shook. Why did I come up with a new word? Because I wanted it to be different than a book. Sure. So the special sauce of what you do, you should spend time thinking about that. And um, no matter what you do. So in a Shook's case, the special sauce, we've already alluded a couple. There's the design, so the, the way it's laid out, the font size, all that. Um, the, the choreography, how we start right up front, we, we have a, they all have a, I mean, even my elder law attorney, one of the very first chapters is, the very first chapter, I don't know if you can see it, who should read this book, because we don't want to waste people's time. Then we make a big bold promise. Here's for the next hour. If you read it, here's Good. my promise to you. And then we jump into the introduction and the content. So there's a, and then at the end, there's a, what we call the next step, which is here's what to do next. Um, so all of that is classic direct response. You know, market, message, media. Um, they're focused. They can be read in an hour. You know, easy to understand. And then the last thing, and and so many authors get this wrong. They'll write their book, they'll publish their book, whether it's through a big publisher or self-publisher, and they don't offer the reader a next step. They don't offer the reader a way to connect with people. So if you're inclined, if I read a great book from Tom Foster and Tom doesn't offer me a way, which I know you would never do, to connect with you and to get more information or whatever it is, you know, shame on the author. So right. these are all part of the special sauce uh, components and there's more. We we come up with we came up with like crazy building blocks. So these are the little bits and pieces of it. You know, you've got the formula. You've got the formula. So somebody can. And how much do you help someone with the writing of the book? Like, do 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 I give you? Like, I've got a couple of. I would say, the seventy percent written. That uh, is that something that you take and you're like, okay, like here's the formula that you would like you, a couple of things that you just showed me right there. Is that, tell me a little bit about the yeah. process. Of and again, it's, a good, it's a good teaching moment for everybody. So we, our standard procedure, Tom, is you write your content. You are the best expert. You know about exactly what it is you do. Now, if I give you a framework and say, listen, Tom, here are the 10 things I need you to write about. It, it definitely is a fast start for you, right? It gives you something to write to. Um, with my program, my clients literally work with me directly. So we get on weekly calls for the first couple of weeks. It's about an eight to 12 week process. So this is a real process typically. Our, our, our record is for my same, my same elder law attorney. She did a from idea to printed book in 22 days. Um, so from the idea to writing it, to designing it, to printing it was 22 days. So it's possible to do much faster. I keep looking over because I have a whole bookshelf over here of our client shooks. Um, but, uh, you know, we encourage, I encourage people to be able to write their own content. Now, if they need help with that, yes, we have ghost writing. It's not a preferred method in my opinion, because mm -hmm. just like I can have a I can hire a professional to audio narrate my book. It'll never sound as authentic as me doing it. 
Um, yes. So there's something when you write your own content. Yes, working with an expert like me to polish it, smart idea. But to forego that responsibility, Tom, you know, we can do it, but I don't, I don't you know, recommend it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with you on these two books. One is the, re the republishing of the five biggest mistakes. Um, and I'll talk to you about that afterwards because I've got an angle on it. I don't want to spoil it, but there's an angle there. And then I have pretty much the book that I've been working on that I actually worked with a, uh, a consultant, uh, Nancy Erickson, who was fantastic in helping me get the book, but I've just, it's on me to finish it. And uh, it's like, that's the one that's about 70% done. And, and that's the attract, convert, retain hmm. the whole, like yeah. how you do yeah. marketing. And so it's all the parts with examples. And, and I want some help from you on that. Um, that is probably a hundred pages plus, And that's got a little bit, that's got you in it. Actually, there's uh, you're in that actually, because it's a big, big part is the mastermind that really set the, set everything off for me. Right. Um, so I would like to do work with you and then we're going to do another follow up after all that's said and done about here's how it went down and then be able to show uh, those those books off. So that's so I'm hiring you. I'm sold. <laughs> all right. It's on recording now. <laughs> yeah, it's totally, totally. OK, so tell me um, what is one of the things that people should take away from from this? I mean, one, one is the big, obviously they should be contacting you to talk to, talk to you about their show. You've I've worked with lawyers before, doctors as well. Any business, any business can, can utilize this no matter what it is. And the key, Tom, is focus, right? So a shook, unlike you know, books with bloat, a shook is not an A to Z encyclopedia, right? It mm -hmm. is, like I said, we took for my elder law attorney client, she originally wanted to do one shook in Alzheimer's disease, right? But we realized there was actually, actually two. There was one for the patient, the person diagnosed, and one for the caregiver. Now, it's smart to break that up anyway. It makes it sure. more concise. It also allows two different pathways on the follow-up marketing, correct, right? And mm -hmm. on the front end, it, it allows people to self-identify. So I'd say the, the, the key takeaway is, regardless if you work with me or whatever, but the more focused and relevant your marketing and your marketing message is. When someone says, hey, I got to have that. That book, that thing is written for me because I am an Alzheimer's caregiver. The better performing your marketing and assets will be. So it's, it's about focus, about relevancy. And I'd say the last thing, Tom, is a lot of folks, a lot, say they want to write a book. Most people don't, and even those that say it, you know, like, you know, for example, not to, you know, you start it and stop. That happens a it's lot. It's hard. Well, it is hard. hard to you don't have it. a. It's well, if you don't have a pathway, and if you think, oh my gosh, I got to write this three hundred page book, yada yada yada. Uh, I just talked to a new, brand new client yesterday. She's the CEO of a company um, that helps hospitals reduce costs. And yesterday was our second call. And she's like, oh, Mike, I'm going to, you know, now that everyone's working virtual and she's got 19 employees and that's all a mess. But she's like, I'm going to take this time and write. She's like, oh, and I got to write 40,000 words. I'm like, Lisa, a average shook is 12 to 15,000 words total. Right. And it, and it was like, I had like, you know, opened oh, giving her a file. gift. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, she was so ecstatic. <laughs> Thank she, you. she knew better too. Cause we had a, a previous call, but she just forgot. I'm like, no. This is literally something that you can do in a, it, literally in a couple of days, a couple of hours even, if you get focused. So right. um, it's about focus, Tom, I guess is my key point. And you can do it. Anybody can do it. And, you know, so if you have this book in you and you don't think you can you know, publish a 300-page book, nor should you, you can definitely publish a Shook. So how does somebody get in touch with you to get their Shook started and published? Well, uh, I didn't ask for your permission ahead of time, but I'm going to assume I can offer a gift. Yes, please. That was actually my next question. Yeah. I, so I put a, a cool little gift together for your listeners and watchers. Um, if you go to MikeCapuzzi.com slash gifts, uh, and that's plural, so Mike Capuzzi, 
That's C-A-P-U-Z-Z-I.com slash gifts. Um, first of all, I created, it's not a PDF, but I did create an online version of well, Main Street Offer. So you can like literally page through it. And if you're so inclined, you know, buy the, the paperback copy on Amazon. Um, so there's a free readable entire shook. So you can see, and actually see the formula and everything right there. Um, the audio version, the one that I paid a lot, you know, some money for and, and did, I'm going to give everybody the audio version. So if you're, you know, into listening while you work out. Uh, and then the third thing, Tom, I'm going to give you listeners are these shook building blocks. Um, I literally used to print out like a deck of cards. Like deal a meal. Remember the old deal a meal? Yes. Richard yes. Simmons. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, we, these are, it's a PDF you could print out, but these are literally, uh, I think it's 23 or 30 cards that you can use to build your shook. So you could say, listen, I want this, oh, in it, cool. but I don't want this. So you can download that. It is a PDF uh, and you can print it off and use it. So those three gifts, just go to mikecapuzzi.com slash gifts. Um, and then my main site is mikecapuzzi.com. And then you can also go to mainstreetauthor.com. We have our programs right on our webpage. All our pricing is transparent. It's right on the website. And uh, yeah, thank you for that, that opportunity. Well, thank you for those gifts. On behalf of all of the people, I would be rushing to get it. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be signing up and working with you on uh, quite a few of these because I need to get them done. I love the formula concept of like in the building blocks. Uh, I think this is just what I need to get these, these things, these final things done. So well, I, I appreciate it, Tom, and knowing your background and knowing the kind of work you do, I think, yes, you would appreciate the very systematized yes. approach. From one, from one tech nerd exactly. to another. <laughs> right, right. Well, Mike, thank you so much, man. It's great talking to you as always. And um, we're going to be doing this more because we're going to be working together. But thank you so much for coming in. Well, for dialing in or Zooming in. Um, and you stay healthy. And uh, as we all do our social distancing and, and we're not allowed, like we just were told yesterday by the governor, we're not allowed to leave our house until June. Oh, my gosh. Now June? Yeah. Yeah. So this is crazy times, but I think one of the most important messages, one, now's a great time to get your book done because we're all sitting around. Never stop marketing. Never stop marketing because there will be an end to this. Yes. There, the, what that looks like, we don't know. It won't be like it was, but always, no matter what, marketing is the, <laughs> never ends. You're always going to be doing that. And lawyers are going to be needed more than ever. So now's your opportunity to get good offers out, get a good shook out, work with Mike Capuzzi, the legendary marketer that you are, brother. Thank you so much, Mike. Tom, thank you. I appreciate it. Keep, up doing, keep doing the great work that you're doing. Thanks, buddy. Take care. All right, everybody. This has been Tom Foster and my great guest, Mike Capuzzi who was one of my very first mentors in this, in this thing that I've been doing for 20 years. And so many thanks to you, Michael. Here we are. We'll talk to you soon. Tom Foster, the world of marketing. See you, everybody.